Hello and welcome to another film about hybrid orbitals. Um, whereas before we were looking at uh, what hybrid orbitals are and how they're made, uh, in this film we're going to look at particular molecules um, to see if the bond angles in those molecules can tell us about how the bonds are being made and uh, what orbitals are being used to make those bonds and what type of bonds we've got. So. Uh, it's quite an in-depth film and there's a few examples to get through. Hopefully it won't take too long, um, but by the end of this film hopefully you'll understand the difference between a sigma and a pi bond, and you'll have looked at a few molecules that contain hybrid orbitals, and you'll see how it is that we answer a kind of exam question where we're being asked what type of orbitals are being used to make the bonds, what type of bonds do we have. Okay, so you might remember in the recent films we've touched on the fact that when atoms share electrons and make bonds what's actually happening is that their orbitals are overlapping okay and depending on the direction or rather the strictly speaking the symmetry that's involved in this overlap we get different types of bonds so if we get two bonds that are uh, um, two orbitals that are overlapping end to end let me give you an example of something like that so let's say for example if well, uh, uh, an S orbital can only over overlap, uh, only ever overlap end to end because of its symmetry. If that was to overlap with a P orbital, like so, then that would be end to end overlap. Or two P orbitals overlapping in that direction, that would be end to end overlap as well. Or even these hybrid orbitals that we've seen, they could overlap end to end with things. Okay, so that would make a sigma bond. Um, a pi bond, on the other hand, involves orbitals that have overlapped side by side. Now, you can't get this with s orbitals because they're spherical, but if you had two p orbitals on neighbouring atoms that were perhaps in that relation to one another, they could overlap here and here. And that would be a side by side overlap, and that would give rise to a pi bond. Okay, so bearing that in mind, let's have a look at methane. And let's, of what I've done here, for all the examples, I've given us a list of questions to ask, okay, to ask ourselves in answering the exam question. What is the geometry? What hybrids do we have? What orbitals have been used? What orbitals are left? And what orbitals are overlapping? And therefore, how are they overlapping? And what type of bonds do we therefore have? Now, what is the geometry here? Well, it doesn't isn't shown by this rather primitive diagram, but we know that this is 109.5 degrees, therefore it's tetrahedral, and therefore we must have sp3 hybrids. Okay? If we've got sp3 hybrids, we've mixed an s with three p's on the carbon. Okay? So s and three times p. Okay. If carbon has mixed its S with its three P's, it doesn't have any orbitals left. It's turned all its orbitals into sp3 hybrids, so there aren't any left. And what are these sp3 hybrids overlapping with? Well, hydrogen has its electrons in its 1s orbital, which is spherical. So we could imagine that each of these sp3 hybrids is overlapping with a spherical orbital on the hydrogen. So S is overlapping with sp3. And the only way that can happen is end to end. And if it's end to end, then we must have four sigma bonds. Each and every one of these bonds is a sigma bond. Okay? So we've got four times sigma. Okay? And we're going to go through that list of questions in that order for every one of the molecules that we look at in this film. We're now going to look at a molecule that has a double bond in it and we're going to consider the same questions. Okay, If we look here, let me just add something to this um, electron dot diagram because it will make it easier for us to see something in a moment. I'm just going to put two lone pairs on the oxygen which is what you'd get if you drew the Lewis diagram. Once again, <laughs> sorry to go on about this, but if you can't draw Lewis diagrams, you're in a whole load of trouble because you can't answer many questions on the bonding topic. Now, what is the geometry and what are the bond angles? Well, the geometry round here is a trigonal planar 
geometry, so we've got 120 degree bond angles because there's three charge centers around that carbon. You could say the same about the geometry around this oxygen. We don't really have a bond angle here because there is only one bond coming off the oxygen, okay? But these pairs of electrons around here are also 120 degrees apart. So we've got a trigonal pyramidal geometry. I don't really have room for that over the other side. What hybrids do we have? Well, if we've got 120 degree bond angles, that's a giveaway for sp2 hybrids, remember? If carbon has used sp2 hybrids, it's taken 1s and 2p's to make them. So carbon has used 1s and 2 times p. Okay? If it's done that, it's got a p orbital left over. It's got 1 times p orbital left over. So, what orbitals are overlapping? Well, that's a little bit difficult because we really need to consider oxygen's orbitals in here as well. As we said here, the if you consider the lone pairs, we've got 120 degrees apart. So that means oxygen is also using sp2 orbitals. It's mixed an s with 2p, so it's got a leftover p. Okay, and it's made some sp2 hybrids. If we draw the oxygen atom here as overlapping with this carbon atom, then there's going to be an sp2 hybrid that is able to overlap end to end with this sp2 hybrid. There's another sp2 hybrid over here, but that's got a lone pair of electrons in it. There's another sp2 hybrid over here, but that's got a lone pair of electrons in it. Remember, these are 120 degrees apart. This leaves on the oxygen one p orbital which has not yet been mixed with anything okay and now this p orbital on the carbon can overlap side by side with that p orbital on the oxygen so this bond in here is actually made of two different types of overlap we've got a sigma bond in here which is caused by the overlap between sp2 and sp2 We've also got a pi bond because we've got this side-by-side -side overlap between two p orbitals on the two atoms. Okay, so I'm not writing that here because I've written it there. How are they overlapping? Side-by-side -side and end-to-end. -end. The side-by-side -side bond is the pi bond here. The end-to-end -end one is this one here, and that's a sigma bond. Okay, we could do the same thing for all the bonds in this molecule, but I've just chosen to focus on that one. But here we'd have an S orbital from the hydrogen overlapping with an sp2 hybrid on the carbon. Okay, and We could look into them as well in the same way by asking ourselves the same questions. You'll be maybe glad to see that this is the last example. The same seven questions to ask. We're looking at propyne and in particular I want to focus on this bond here Okay, but we might have a quick look at that one there as well. Okay, that's not really a bond there, but oh, you know what I'm talking about. It's that one there. Okay, now first of all, we're looking at our molecule, having drawn our Lewis diagram. This has to have worked in, our, in order for us to have a chance with this question. And we're looking at this bond angle here, right? It's a 180 degree bond angle. As soon as we see 180 degree, we ought to be thinking it's linear for a start and what hybrids do we have well sp hybrids make 180 degree bond angles so what orbitals have been used to make them well carbon needs 1s and 1p so 1 times s and 1 times p is used mixed together to make these hybrids what orbitals are left well there's two orbitals that haven't been used yet on carbon and there's 2 times the p orbital what orbitals are overlapping? Well, we've got one carbon that's doing that and the other carbon that's doing exactly the same thing. So if I drew another carbon here, um, let's maybe do it in red, and we've got exactly the same hybridization on this other carbon atom. So we've got this sp hybrid over here and we've got this unused p up there and this unused p, which is kind of in the foreground, and in the background, if you can imagine what I'm saying there. So we've got two carbons which are hybridized in the same way. These two orbitals here can overlap end to end. So we've got a sigma overlap there, a sigma bond 
So that's one of our three bonds. We've also got a pi bond forming by the overlap of those two p orbitals and another pi bond formed by the overlap of those two p orbitals. I'm sure this diagram looks like a horrible mess right now, but the point is that we've got a sigma bond and two pi bonds in here formed by the sigma bond is formed by the overlap of sp with sp and the two pi bonds are both formed by the overlap of p orbitals with p orbitals this carbon here is tetrahedral so it's got 180 uh, sorry 109.5 degree bond angle so it must be tetrahedral so it must be sp3 and we must have an sp3 hybrid here overlapping with a s of the hydrogen we could even look here and say well this carbon was sp hybridized so it's got this orbital over here it's got an sp hybrid sticking out over here this one's got an sp3 hybrid because all its bond angles are 109.5 so this bond here well we maybe have a think about that before i tell you but it's a sigma bond formed by the overlap of sp3 on this carbon with sp on that carbon okay because we remember we've got two sp orbitals on this carbon because we took two orbitals to make those hybrids right i'm going to leave it there okay and just to remind you what we were trying to achieve by the end of this film we we're trying to understand the difference between a sigma and a pi bond so that's to do with how orbitals overlap and we've looked at a number of different examples of molecules where we've asked ourselves the sort of questions that we might get in an exam about what orbitals is this bond made out of okay what orbitals were used to make this bond quite tricky um, for a lot of people this topic so make sure that you've kind of watched any bits that maybe were a bit too quick maybe you watched them a second time if you've got any comments to make or questions to ask please feel free to get in touch either by coming to see me or by posting a comment on YouTube.